Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in our chats with Emily as we are calling our readings through the 1,775 poems of Emily Dickinson within the Johnson edition. We turn now to poem number 44, If She Had Been the Mistletoe. This is a very interesting little poem, especially because Emily at times seems to enjoy just being enigmatic, just difficult to understand, and she loves to play with words, and she loves to play with pronouns, and we're definitely going to see that here. Without that understanding, this poem can be kind of difficult to read. Um, it is another one of what we will call the Rose Poems, uh, taking us back especially to poem 19, where she said, I'm a, a rose. Now, our assumptions are that you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net, down that left-hand side, Chats with Emily, our playlist, and I'm hopeful that you've already studied our introductory lecture, and as well that you've worked with the previous 43 poems. We just finished with number 43, Could Live. Now, again, this is another rose poem. This one uh, uh, was sent to Sam Boyle's um, and this takes us back to poem 33, which we've already covered, where she sends a rose in place of, of course, herself. And that's going to be important because in this poem, the rose will actually stand in for Emily, which obviously makes sense given what she said about herself in poem 19. Let's just enjoy the way Emily loves to play with language. And again, for those of us as writers and as poets, this is one of the reasons we consider Emily so precious to us. She teaches us, she guides us to enjoy the experience of playing with language. Let's enjoy our reading of it as well. And just listen to the sounds of this wonderful little poem. If she had been the mistletoe and I had been the rose, how gay upon your table my velvet life to close. Since I am of the druid and she is of the dew, I'll deck tradition's buttonhole and send the rose to you. Now, of course, the D sounds and the O sounds in this poem, right away we will hear. But let's begin with pronouns. This poem was attended by a rose sent to her pal, Sam Boyles. We've commented already in several other poems about Sam and about how significant Boyles is in her life. Notice the pronoun she will be referencing the very rose that she will have sent to Boyles. Why? Because the rose will be a stand-in for Emily. In other words, it's as if she seems to be arguing. I would prefer to have set myself, but alas, I can't because I am of that druad class. I am somehow distant and lofty. Notice, if the rose that I sent had been the mistletoe, and by the way, we will come back to mistletoe when we meet poem 270. Four, um, his gait was soundless like the bird, but rapid like the roe. His fashion's quaint mosaic, or happily, mistletoe. And of course, we're familiar with mistletoe as being that flower of love that often will be the winter flower of love, as opposed to obviously the spring-summer flower of love, the rose. If she had been the mistletoe and I had been the rose, in other words, if I could have been there for the rose, how gay upon your table my velvet life to close. In other words, in the same way that a cut rose is only the velvet, the life of that rose is only going to last for a brief time and then pass away. I would be willing to have spent my life, the last of my life, with you in the same way that this rose that I've sent to you will obviously spend its time. Since, now that takes us from if to since, notice that construction, if blah, 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 but obviously it doesn't happen since, notice she says, I am of the Druid. Now this Druid reference we'll come back to when we meet poem 1068 with a little bit of a difference. Remit as yet no grace, no furrow on the glow, yet a Druidic difference enhances nature now. Of course, Druids, that priestly class of the Celtic tradition, and she uses the word tradition here, of course, uh, the Druid is the special ones, the ones who are beyond the rest, and to that degree, they hold the secrets, they hold the knowledge, right? Since I am of the Druid, and she, that is to say now, the, 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 you know, you get, you know, oh, she is the rose, right, right, right. She is of the dew. I'll deck tradition's buttonhole, notice capitalized tradition's buttonhole, uh, the, the, the jacket that uh, Sam Boyles might wear, and send the rose 
to you. Now, of course, you can hear these D sounds of druad, of do, of deck, and you can hear this U sound, this oo sound of druad and you. So the genius of this poem is both tongue in cheek as well as the sounds are quite remarkable. Well, what really is going on here at 2A? Well, I think the argument that she's making is that it's always best to be face to face with your pals. Sometimes it just doesn't work out, and so you send the stand in of a rose instead. Again, at 2B, the joy that she is able to play with words, and especially her use of the pronoun she here, I think is brilliant. At 3A, well, obviously you can go back to her poem uh, 19, I am the rose, she says. At 3B, how can we own a little poem like this? Well, what was a time that you couldn't be with someone you cared for or your pal, and so you had to provide some kind of of a stand-in. One or two of you reporting, you've even done that with a poem or two of Emily's. I love it. Thank you.